So now let us do a last minute revision for the subject of physics for class 12 CBSC. So we'll take up the chapter number one. So that is electric charges and fields. So here we'll so try to cover up certain important definition and concepts. So we have first one at a glance, the quantization of charge. It is the net charge on any body and is given by Q equal to plus or minus N into E, where N stands for the number of electrons supplied to the body or removed from the body. And we have number two, the electrostatic force between the two charges. So this is also known as the Coulomb's law. So where it is given mathematically as so F equal to K into Q1 into Q2 divided by R square. Or we can say that force is directly proportional to the product of two charges Q1 and Q2 and the distance between the two and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges Q1 and Q2. And K is also equal to, so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into epsilon naught r, where for here the epsilon naught r will be equal to 1. And therefore we can write F equal to 1 by 4 pi into epsilon naught into epsilon naught r into Q1 Q2 divided by r square. So therefore F for here is given by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 Q2 divided by R square. So because epsilon R equal to 1. So where this is equal to so 9 into 10 to the power of 9 into Q1 Q2 divided by R square. So this is known as the Coulomb's law. So mathematically we can write Coulomb's law like this. And further understanding the electric field intensity so due to a point charge. So if we consider any point charge so therefore the electrical intensity can be given by E equal to so limit as so Q naught tends to 0 so F divided by Q naught where F is the is the representation in the vector form or we can write this as so limit of the vector F divided by Q naught as Q naught tends to 0. And the force on a charged particle placed in an electric field so here you can see a charged particle Q is placed in an electric field E. So therefore we can say that force on an charged particle placed in an electric field is given by F equal to Q into E. Or in the vector form we can write this as so vector F equal to Q into vector E in the vector form. And here you have to make a note that the direction of F and E is same if Q is positive and opposite if Q is negative. And further you have to also make a note that the electric field intensity due to an infinite charge density lambda. So here you can see that the electric field intensity is given by E equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 lambda divided by R. So where you can see the the representation in the figure form as shown here. So where you have can see that the charge at any point or the electric field intensity is given by 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 lambda divided by R. So where so lambda re, so represents the linear charge density. And further you can see that the electric field intensity near an infinite thin sheet of surface charge density sigma. So here you can see the, the figure so representation of this the electric field intensity is given by E equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. So where sigma is the, the surface charge density. So defined by the surface charge density and for a thick sheet we have equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught and understanding the dipole moment so understanding the dipole so here you can see the dipole moment p so represented by and equal to q 
into 2L and in the so in the factorial form we can see so here you can see so in the vectorial form P equal to Q into 2L so where so minus Q and plus Q so forms a dipole and separated by a distance L so here we have two equal charges of opposite nature so separated by a distance L so which forms a dipole and the moment existing between so these two are given by P equal to Q into 2L so this you can see the mathematical representation of a dipole moment and further the torque on a dipole in the uniform electric field is given by in the vectorial form tau equal to P into E. So therefore here you can see that so tau max will be equal to P E and the under theta equal to 90 degree so we have so tau max equal to P into E and the tau minimum will be equal to 0 at theta equal to 0 or 180 degree. So therefore the net force will be equal to 0 at any value of theta. So thus you can see the torque on a dipole moment in an uniform electric field is given by tau equal to P into E. So here you can see a uniform electric field so existing on a, a dipole. So here you can see a dipole so represented by the positive and the negative charges and also the angle theta so with respect to the dipole and the, the uniform electric field in the direction of the uniform electric field. So therefore we can so try to understand so tau max and tau minimum at angles of theta equal to 90 degree or theta equal to 0 or 180 degree respectively. And the electric field due to a short dipole. So here you can see a short dipole so represented by so minus q and plus q charges and P is the dipole moment existing between these two charges. So therefore the electric field due to a short dipole so can be understood by so two sections. So number one at the axial point so given by E axis so the axial point the electric field is given by so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into 2 P divided by R cube. So where R is the distance so between so these two points so between the points P so represented by the axial point and at the equatorial point we have E1 equal to so 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into P divided by R cube and further you can see the equatorial constant K. So the equatorial constant K is given by so epsilon so divided by epsilon naught and that is also equal to C in any medium so divided by C in air. So this is the definition of a dielectric constant so given by and represented by the symbol K and that is equal to epsilon divided by epsilon naught. And further you can see the null point so represented for a like charge so where X equal to so D divided by square root of capital Q divided by Q so mod of so capital Q divided by Q plus 1. So where X is the, the distance so between the two charges Q and capital Q and N represents the null point. So therefore we can see that the null point distance can be so represented by X equal to D divided by square root of so mod of capital Q divided by Q plus 1 where D is the distance between the two charges Q and capital Q. And coming to the unlike charges so if the charges are unlike so then we can so define the null point X as equal to D divided by square root of so modulus of capital Q divided by Q so minus 1 where you can see the null point so existed away or outside the two charges Q and capital Q. So in the first case you can see the null point for like charges so exist between 
the two charges so that is q1 capital q for for like charges so where you can see the modulus of q is less than so modulus of capital q and the null point so with respect to unlike charges so so this exists outside the two point charges q and capital q so at a distance x so from any one of the charge so therefore d is the distance between the two charges q and q so therefore in this case of unlike charges so x is given by x equal to d divided by square root of modulus of capital q divided by q minus q where q and so capital q and q represent the charges the point charges and so d represents the distance so between the two the point charges q and capital q and also you can see the electric flux so the definition of the electric flux so here you can see the pictorial definition of the electric flux for a closed surface so given by phi equal to integral of the electric field e into ds cos theta and that is further equal to integral of e into ds or ds equal to ds into the unit vector n so here you can see the unit vector representation and ds is the the surface area and here you can see the electric field direction so represented for the electric flux and given for a closed surface and the electric flux for a uniform field is given by phi equal to so the electric field so es into cos theta and that is equal to e into s and the maximum flux so phi max is given by plus or minus e into s where so when the lines are perpendicular to the surface and the electric flux will be minimum so when it is equal to zero so when the lines are parallel to the surface and the electric flux will be positive for the leaving flux or the flux going away and phi will be negative for entering flux so where the flux is coming towards a point and number 14 the gauss's theorem is defined as the total electric flux phi so given by e into ds and that is equal to 1 by epsilon not into the net charge enclosed by the surface so this is the mathematical representation of the gauss's theorem and here you can see the the graph existing between the f and r so this is also called as the coulomb's law and the force between the two charges versus the distance between them so that is we can see that f is so inversely proportional to r square so therefore you can see the graph which is inversely proportional to r square so far the so f versus r so that is the force between the two charges and the distance between them so given by f equal to so 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into q1 into q2 divided by r square so this is also known as the coulomb's law so here you can see that force is inversely proportional to r square and the graph is so representing the force and r and also similarly you can see the graph so, so represented by the electric field due to a point charge so with respect to distance so also given by e is so inversely proportional to r square and here you can see e is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into capital q divided by r square so where e is the so the electric field due to the point charge so with so with respect to the distance and further you can see the one more graph of e due to the charged wire so with respect to the the distance also here you can see that e is inversely proportional to r and e is given by so lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon not into r so thus we have seen so number of graphs so represented so with respect to the charge so that is so with respect to the electric field and also with respect to the distance and also the coulomb's law also we have seen 
and also the electric field due to the point charge or with respect to distance. So thus we have covered so important points uh, and also noted some important definitions and concepts so related to this particular chapter on electric fields and charges. So this completes the last, uh, say last minute revision on this particular chapter. Okay, thank you.